Hello, everyone, and welcome to another fine episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I say it's going to be a fine episode because I have complete confidence that it will be, um, because I've just had a chance to get to know Otis McGregor a little bit, and I get to help you get to know him a little bit as well. Otis's passion lies in helping people succeed. He used this passion as fuel through years in Army Special Ops and coaching rugby. It now drives him to create better leaders. He believes that better leaders create better organizations, better organizations create better communities, and better communities will create a better world. I, I, the first time I read that sentence, when I was looking at your bio, I was like, oh, that's just, that's it. That's everything. And so I was like, I wanted to recreate it perfectly here. Otis, it's great to meet you, and I'm glad to have you on the pod. Hey, thanks for having me, Kevin. It's good to good to chat with you and uh, have have a little fun in the green room before we uh, jumped on the recording button. So yeah, good so it's always good, and you never know. You never know if the chemistry is not going to be there. You know, I like to, I like to go have a little bit of back and forth, do a little small talk, just to make sure that you know we like each other. And I'm completely unsurprised that I think we like each other. So let's <laughs> let's jump in and talk. Let's not go all the way back to the beginning because that's we don't have that kind of time. But let's start with how you got your start, how you got your beginning as a coach. How did you sort of get your powers, get your superhero powers? How did you discover or realize or kind of grow into coaching? And how has that evolved as you've kind of grown your coaching practice to today? Well, I had a moment uh, here in my home office. I'd been retired from the Army after 25 years, retired for seven years. Mm -hmm. And I'd worked, I'd bounced around from job to job and every one of them, I'm just it wasn't sitting right. And that moment, uh, interestingly enough, will be seven years this uh, next month, seven years next month, sitting in my home office here, feeling sorry for myself, wondering what's wrong with me? what What's going on? Why can't I find that job? As I sat here, I reflected back on my life since leaving the army. And I realized that only two things have been uh, consistent in my life, my family and boys high school rugby. <laughs> and yeah, very <laughs> ironic uh, that those were the two things. But as I as I looked at it, it was like, well, why boys high school rugby? Because I didn't play rugby growing up. I'm a Texas boy. I played football. Yeah. So <laughs> I looked at this volunteer thing that was, I mean, truthfully, a, a second full time job. Why was I spending so much time with it? And I, I took that 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 thing that that commitment that I'd made, and I, I looked at it in three different parts. Number one, the game of rugby. Love it now. Uh, you can see those of you on video can see the ball over my shoulder. Uh, <laughs> the boys, you know, we were a club. So our house was the clubhouse, which meant mm. our house was full of teenage boys all the time. 35 extra sons in and out of our house. Love those boys. <laughs> uh, but the third element is what real I realized was what was really fueling me. And that was their coach challenging them, holding them accountable pushing them further than they thought they could be teaching, guiding, and mentoring them mm. to be not just good rugby players, but great young men in life. And I took that and I started to explore that concept a bit more. And I got introduced to something I'd never heard of executive coaching, leadership coaching. Mm. And I, I took my, what was then a uh, business development consulting business and I pivoted into executive coaching. And that's, that's what I've been doing ever since. And man, it is just so much more fulfilling. I mean, you read my, my purpose statement, man, it, that that's my fuel. That's the thing that gets me up in the morning is to change the world. And I believe that everybody has that opportunity to do it. You may not think it, but man, you don't know an action, what action that might be. And I, this just popping into my head, one of my favorite things. Say hi to somebody, smile at somebody. You're passing somebody in the aisle at Walmart. You give them the, the two-finger country wave as you're driving down <laughs> the road, right? All uh -huh. those sort of things. You never know that that might be the difference in that person's life. That might stop them. That might stop them from spiraling down into the pits of despair and depression. Mm -hmm. And that's changing the world. We can all do it. And just little simple things. And doing it with intention too. That's something that I've often, I don't want to say struggled with, but have embraced the challenge of is, you know, out in the world, getting into my own head. I'm in my own thoughts. I'm doing running my own errands. I'm doing my job. I'm, you know, I'm with family. I'm with friends. I'm by myself. I'm in the grocery store. I'm at the mechanics. I'm, I'm you know, I'm just living my life. 
and I'm thinking my own thoughts and I'm maybe stuck in my own head. Maybe I'm dwelling on something. Maybe I'm thinking about the next thing I'm supposed to be doing. And I forget to be kind or be polite or just engage with the human beings who are around me. And I, I'm lucky to have been helped through that at a young age by a key mentor, like kind of in my, in my mid twenties to just basically kind of like, give me some tough love and be like, dude, get out of your head and get out of your way. And just remember that there are a lot of people out there who could use a smile, who could use some eye contact, who could just use just some kindness in the smallest possible increments all the way up to every other large opportunity for kindness we get. And I love I love that that's at the heart of why you do what you do, because that really is at the heart of why, I mean, anybody who cares about the world, why we all do what we do. We might not be able to articulate it that way, but we just we want to help people be better and knowing that that will also help us be better, you know? That it's oh. like, I, I, you know, it's it's such a, a beautiful, I, I think of it as like whatever the opposite of a vicious circle is. It's <laughs> it's a vir virtuous circle, you might call it like that, but I don't like to throw that word around there. But it's just, actually, you know, you, you telling that story and explaining that kind of reminded me of how something that I got really good at, especially during the pandemic, where I'm constantly masked in public and am, I'm I'm losing half of my ability to really express like that kind of kindness and just show, I can make eye contact. And so- not that I, you know, had to work really hard for it because I got some crow's feet going on around the eyes, but I learned to really smile with my whole face mm -hmm. and just like smile with my eyes and my forehead and my shoulders. And when I'm engaging with someone to really look straight at them and and uh, not, not in a creepy way, at least hopefully not in a creepy <laughs> way, but to really just be intentional about that, knowing that I'll never know what kind of benefit that might have, you know, been to somebody's life, what kind of moment they might have been in, whether, you know, however it landed, but just having that faith, having that belief that it is the right thing to do, that it is helping, it's contributing and just building from there. Sorry, oh, yeah. you reminded so, me of very personal decisions that got me excited. <laughs> no, it, but it's so true. You know, I, I can remember uh, when we first went to wear a mask and everything we were doing, I did a little video just about what you said. You know, we can't <laughs> smile at people, but you know what? You know, because your mask is covering up your face, your your mouth. But you can do the you can do the wave, you can do the head nod, you can some people might not pick up the eye movement. Those, you know, if you're a bit more into the body language, you will. But those little things make all the difference in the world. And it, it reminds me of a good friend of mine, uh, Herb Flight Time Lang told uh, and he says this and he teaches this to elementary school kids. Kindness is free. And Herb, Herb played for the Harlem mm -hmm. Globetrotters for 10, 10, 12 years. So he knows about culture. He knows about other people. And just you think about that, how simple that is and how, how much truth there is to that. Kindness is free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, yeah, no, I, I, I could talk about that for that alone. I could talk about for hours, but there was something else too that yeah, as you were speaking about your origin stories that really struck a chord with me and it's how uh, for a lot of people, even these days, even as coaching has just exploded into all sorts of areas and become much more um, on top of people's awareness and as, as they move through their professional lives and their personal lives, a lot of times we think of coaching in the context of youth and sports are really like where, where like the first thing that comes to a lot of people's minds. And it gets, gets me thinking about something that I know a lot of coaches focus on too. And that's sort of identifying those gaps where it's like we're in these in these areas of our lives where there, our education and our growth is very structured and there are there are coaches and teachers and mentors all over the place and then we get to a certain point in our life and it's just kind of like you know we're just kicked out the door it's like all right enjoy the next you know if you're lucky 50 60 years however long it goes um and i feel like there's such a, a not just a need but like a hunger for more for more coaching as you move through your life. I don't think you ever really outgrow the need for a coach or at least the benefits you can get from a coach. I just think that we just don't have, at least we haven't in the past, had people who are filling those gaps, executive coaches, leadership coaches, career coaches, across all sorts of industries, hyper-specific, more broad, you know, corporate, entrepreneurial, and everything in between. There's so much good work to be done and there's such a hunger for it too, such a recognition of the value of it that I feel like there's a good, a good uh, forward momentum right now in the coaching industry in general that I'm like, I'm really, really pleased to be a small part of. And it's really, it's great to watch and great to experience. Yeah, it is. It is. And, uh, you know, every professional athlete has a coach. 
and I'm not just talking about the ones on the team. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I spent some time with, uh, golly, just drew a blank on his name. Plays linebacker for the uh, Philadelphia Eagles uh, oh. last summer. Spent some time at his house. Yeah, big dude has a place in uh, Texas. And we were hanging out there. He's got a personal trainer coach. They're in the off season. I mean, we were there hanging out in May and his personal trainer coach <laughs> is there. I mean, here's a guy at the top of his game. I mean, he's, he's an, you know, he's an NFL all-star pro pro bowler. Got to get <laughs> my words, right. Right. Sport, right. Words. Right. <laughs> but, you know, it, it is, he is that guy and he's got a coach. You think he's been lifting weights <laughs> since he, since he was probably like in sixth grade, he's been, he's been lifting weights and he still got has a personal trainer coach that should tell you something right there and then you Mm -hmm. look at all the other top athletes every one of them has coaches to make them better and i think that's something that that we should all learn from i have a coach i have a coach that i work with that that helps me grow and pushes me each and every time we talk in each day and i cringe sometimes because it's like (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I know I need to do that. I don't want to do that. But you know what? That's going to make me better. It's going to allow me to make more impact because that legacy, that legacy that we live for is, is that, that impact that we're making in the world. That change, mm-hmm. whether, it's, whether it's the smile or a direct impact to somebody's life by helping them have even if it's not an aha moment, because aha mm-hmm. moments are pretty cool, right? But e- even if it's not that, even if it's just helping them move forward just a little bit more, achieving something that, yeah, they could figure out in two years, five years, but helping them achieve it in the next couple of weeks, that's what I'm talking about. That's that's mm-hmm. the kind of success that having a coach can bring into your career, your life, because somebody looking at the outs from the outside looking in who's who's walked some of the same paths and hears and listens deeply listens Mm -hmm. to what's going on and when i say listen i don't mean i'm getting the words but i'm getting the full picture right because i can hear the voice inflictions and even if it's not a video call i can still sense it oh that's a touchy Mm -hmm. subject right Mm -hmm. You start to listen to those things and you know, because you listen, you know what you can do to help them overcome the burden, the obstacle that is holding them back. Not that they couldn't figure it out on their own, because I can tell you, I'm that guy right here. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've, I've figured out a lot of stuff on my own. There is no doubt about it, but it was freaking hard. And mm-hmm. You know what? <laughs> if I'd raise my hand and ask for, you know, whether it was in the uh, teams when I was when I was a Green Beret or or even a little bit later in that military career or even in the business world, if I hadn't been so prideful in the sense of, hey, I need some help here. Uh, who should I talk to? Can I can you give me a hand? Because you know what? Every one of them people would do it. Mm-hmm. And, it's the and same be glad thing. you asked. Yeah, it's the same thing. As we go forward in life, whether you're the CEO, the junior manager, somebody who's just out of college and you're not quite sure this is what you want to do. Well, guess what? You can you can trudge through it and maybe (laughs) figure it out. And 10 years later, 15 years later, look back on it, go, dang, that was that was not the right thing. (laughs) Or you can hire a coach who will walk through it with you who will guide you. A coach is not going to tell you how to do it. They're going to guide you and mentor you, right? right. It's, it's rugby. And this is one of the reasons I love rugby because rugby coaching is so much like coaching as an executive coaching, doing leadership coaching, even life coaching is so similar because, you know, with, with those, with these coaching with clients, you have a call, right? Mm-hmm. An hour or whatever, whether it's a group call or individual calls. You have a call. And then that person has to go off and do those things. Rugby is the same way. You practice all week. As a coach, you get that final say right before the first whistle. Hey, guys, don't forget. <laughs> and then the first whistle, and guess what? 
God turns their ears off. I don't know how <laughs> it happens, but God turns their ears off. Either that or he, there's a sound barrier on the sideline. One or two. <laughs> they don't hear anything you say until halftime. You get 10 minutes at halftime. Mm -hmm. You get to say one thing. Maybe I, I used to push it and say two that I wanted them to focus on in the next half of the game. And then that's it. It's just like coaching because I'm going to, I'm going to say here, we're going to work on this. We're going to build this capability. We're going to build this process, this thought process in your head. I'm going to show you some skills that you might want to integrate into your life so that you can live your life with intention and pursuit of your purpose to achieve your success. When you start to do that, and you make those changes you're going to make slow improvements, but the coach is going to help hold you to that path. Whether he's your, he or she becomes your accountability partner or not, but mm -hmm. that is, that's where a coach helps you out. That's where it makes the difference. It's not just telling you if, if you hire a coach, pet peeve here, if you hire a coach and they just say, okay, Kevin, you need to do this, this, and this. And you'll be successful. And I, I, I'm very, very familiar with this because I work with a lot of people in transitioning out of their career. Hmm. And I do not tell them how to do it. I joke with them and say, here, here's your, here's your 53 item checklist. You fill out this checklist, <laughs> all 53 of these items in the proper order in the proper time, you will live a happy life. And if you believe that, <laughs> I got some oceanfront property in Arizona. I'm going to be selling you. Right, oh, exactly. It what has thinking. to be your, <laughs> and a coach's job is to help you mm -hmm. develop your plan, your vision for your success. That's why I say that phrase: that you live with intention to achieve your purpose, to achieve your success. Mm -hmm. That's that's the secret sauce, man. It's it's about what you want, and when it's you, what you want, and it's the plan to achieve what you want. There ain't no stopping you. That's right. That's right. And, and you know what? If I just wanted a recipe, I could find one anywhere. You know, I'm actually looking for some help in the kitchen. I'm actually looking to prepare something a little bit special. I want you to come in. Let's do this together. Because I kind of, I don't, you know, you can tell me like exactly how much of what goes into what, but I know there's, there's some, there's more to it than that. And a coach is so much more helpful in that regard. And I love, 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 love the way that you identified the, uh, the difference between those aha moments, which are, uh, acknowledged are so great especially when as a coach you're there for them some of the best moments of your entire professional career are those moments but the ones i really like are the moments that are something more like a hmm or a huh sort of like this implied i hadn't quite thought of it that way before those are the moments of the daily work you know the the the, the throughout the week as you're coaching them up obviously they can go out there and perform and some of those aha moments will happen you know, in the, you know, on the training field, some of those will happen on the playing field. Some of those will happen in between. Some of those will happen in conversations afterwards, but those, those huh moments, I like, I mean, I like, I love the aha moments, but I think I like the huh moments better because it's, someone's got a question that they haven't quite thought of in that way before and you help them find it. And they're going to, they're going to seek out that answer with you and they're going to find it for themselves. And it's just, there's, there are a few things more powerful than that. Oh yeah. You, you've planted the seed. For them to nurture and grow in that direction. That's, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, they, they say, well, I'd really like to, okay, well, how do we do that? What are the steps? What's the, what's that vision look like? What's that thing out there? And then what does that mean? Define it. I mean, that's one of my favorite things. Well, I want to spend more time with my kids. Okay. What's that? What's look like? Is that, <laughs> uh, you know, I love this Tony Robbins thing. He, he, he's doing uh you know, big stage of people and he stops and asks the guy, all right, what do you want? He says, I want to make more money. Tony pulls out his wallet and hands him a $5 bill and says, congratulations. There you go. And walks <laughs> off. Right. Because you got to mm -hmm. define it. What does, what does more time with my kids mean? Maybe it's the same amount of time, but you're not actually there. Exactly. Maybe you're all, you're thinking about all these other things. You're not present in the moment. And that's, that's where we start to make the difference, you yeah. know, and, and I'll, I'll say my favorite thing about being present in the moment, because mm, yes. what you do right now in the moment creates the future you want, whether you want mm -hmm. it or not. 
Mm -hmm. You can be intentional in this moment and what you do and how you do it and whether or not you're present. Or you can go through the motions and just have whatever comes to you. Mm -hmm. That's what the present moment is all about. It creates your future. Well, speaking of the present moment, I do. I could. I could. I can have this kind of conversation with you all day. I can tell this is this is the stuff. This is this is the real the real juice for me. The secret sauce, not the not so secret sauce. But speaking of the present moment, let's talk at least a little bit about what your coaching practice looks like today. Um, and I usually kind of two part this question: mm -hmm. Who do you coach? I'm almost like, what did you know? And when did you know it? Who do you coach primarily? Like, who do you focus on? Maybe a certain stage of their development, a certain level, and a certain organization certain industry? And then how do you coach them? Are you primarily one-on-one? -on -one? Do you have group coaching or masterminds? Do you do keynote speeches? Uh, do you have any books? Do you uh, publish any courses? All of the above. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, the you, answer is coach yes. Coach? And we can just <laughs> yes. Let's move so right on. <laughs> I, I focus, we focus, the uh, Tribe and mm -hmm. Purpose team, we focus on small business leaders, 10 mm -hmm. million to 100 million, who are seeing success because with success comes growth. Not, mm. not I'm crashing and burning, although we can help you too. Yeah. But we want people who are seeing success and are going, holy crap, I've got success. Now, what do I do? Mm. How do I continue that success? Wow, we grew, we grew 15% last year. Can we grow 20% next year? Mm -hmm. That's what, that's who we focus on is that nice. growth, those, those teams, those small business leaders who are growing in success. And we do it, we do it through our group coaching program called Green Beret Leadership Program. Mm -hmm. And the Green Beret Leadership Program is helping create leaders within your team, not just people who have the position written on their door or on their business card. We're talking mm -hmm. everybody. Could you imagine leading a team of leaders? I mean, I did that in special ops. As, as a Green Beret uh, commander, every one of those guys were, were <laughs> awesome leaders. And you know what? Because they were great leaders, they made me a better leader. They challenged mm -hmm. me each and every day. And wouldn't you want that for your business? That everybody that you, that, because in case you didn't know, great leaders make great followers. Mm -hmm. And everybody in your business is a leader. They understand leadership. They know what leadership is. And they can lead themselves. That's that that twenty percent. You're setting it's, the bar too low, then. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna have to lift that up a little bit. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so a, that's that's, that's the Green Beret Leadership Program, and that's a that's our group coaching program that we run, and it's a it's a combination of uh, roughly seven hours of video and then weekly uh, group coaching sessions that we run, and it's yeah, I I, I love that. Uh, uh, I do also do a mastermind, but it, it's a, not a but it, it's a give back to my veteran tribe. Mm. It's a, I call it the veteran business leader mastermind. So it's a little special thing that I do to help out other veteran business leaders uh, grow and move forward with their life, not just their business, but their life. Mm. And uh, so that's another piece that, that we do at Tribe and Purpose. And, and we got a podcast. We also of do course. a podcast. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> of course. I do it with my son, who's one of my coaches, and it's called the Cam and Otis Show. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm, I, I do it all. I got a book, Enable Your Team's Success. Uh, I got a bourbon. I, <laughs> I don't all, think I didn't notice that back there on the video show. get to see the bourbon, but yes, it is a <laughs> 70th anniversary commemorative bourbon. Uh, yes, it's, it is quite pleasant i'm very happy with the way it came out <laughs> um, so uh, yeah it. uh it is fun making this impact and, and creating great leaders around i selfishly really want to just keep talking to you but I, like like i sort of talked we talked about a little bit before i hit record i was going to eyeball the zoom clock and realize that we'd gotten a little long in the tooth but I'll just have to have you back on again in a few months and we'll just kind of continue this conversation because it's, I mean, you're, you're doing the kind of work that I love and you're able to talk about it very eloquently and with a great deal of passion. So, I mean, why wouldn't I want to talk to you again? <laughs> this is, this is the good stuff. It's, it's like, I, I love how transparently enthusiastic and passionate you are. It's, it is crystal clear that this is the, like, I jump out of bed in the morning to do this.
for you. And that's just, that's lovely and very inspiring to see. So, I mean, thank you for, thank you for being here on the pod, of course, but just thank you for doing the work that you're doing and doing it the way that you're doing it. I'm, I'm grateful that you're out there doing what you're doing. And I'm just glad to be like a tiny little part of it. And I'm glad to know you. So thank you. Thank you, Tripoli. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and thank you for the opportunity to uh, express some of my passion and, and get fired up. That's why I always mm -hmm. do shows standing up. Cause I get, I, I get too excited to sit down when I'm talking about. <laughs> Same. I start shifting my weight and sliding side to oh, side, yeah. leaning forward. I just, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the best way to go for me. <laughs> it is, it is. Well, Otis, thank you audience. I mean, thank you for listening. Do yourself a favor. Links to everything we talked about, you know, website, books, show notes, all that stuff down below. Um, and if you have any questions for Otis, just reach out. Again, there'll be links. I'm sure you're reachable. Tribe and Purpose, the website will be a good place. Are you are you especially active on any particular social media where you like to have people reach out to you? LinkedIn. LinkedIn's a great place. We got a great uh, presence there. And uh, uh, yeah, and, and check out our uh, Monday Moments newsletter. Uh, oh. posted on LinkedIn. And so also, also uh, you'll, you'll see it on all the social media just as an image, but you can read it on LinkedIn and then you can also sign up for it at mm. tribe-purpose.com and, uh, you know, get it first thing in the morning. It helps keep kick your week off with a stoic quote. And then Ooh. something I learned this week, which, you know, it's always, sometimes it's like, oops, other times it's like deep philosophical, but you know, it's, it, it is something that I learned that I'm sharing my lessons, my life lessons each and every Monday morning uh, in, in our Monday Moments newsletter. Excellent. All right. Lots of lots of options for people to get to know you a little bit better, which is how we like it. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Otis. Um, I'm going to talk to you again real soon. I'm, I'm going to have you back on. I'll be, I'll be sliding into your LinkedIn DMs and inviting you back on the show probably in a few months. I'll make myself wait until we get a little, start seeing some warmer weather. <laughs> awesome. But, Thank you. And to the audience, thank you once again. And we'll talk to you again here very soon.